What is the most unconventional way you've ever seen someone take care of a wound? Objection! Leading the witness! <laughs> you clearly have an example ready to go! I saw a friend of ours, whom you know, uh, crash through some drywall after riding an ironing board down the stairs. When he stood up, he had a compound fracture. The bone coming out of his hand, and he pops it back into place, wraps it in duct tape, keeps going. <laughs> Part one, bleeding control. All right, we're here with Daniel and Jenna, our EMT friends. You're just gonna live here now, right? You're just gonna stay here because I really like we it. can't be maybe, trusted. Maybe we can fix all this up first and then uh, make it safe. <laughs> Until it's safe, we definitely need them. So you guys are both EMTs, right? Yes, sir. But but not paramedics. And yeah. I guess there's a difference Clear between the two. Clear it up, please. What is the difference? Well, there's the two types. There's your EMT basic, which is what we are, and then there's a paramedic. There's an intermediate level, but no one uses that anymore. Yeah. Basics are more for wound care. They can do basic drugs like albuterol for asthma attacks and stuff. Paramedics is when you get into the IVs um, and other medicines for, for cardiac issues. So EMTs might be first on the scene, but there'll be certain drastic measures that can't be taken by EMTs, and Correct. you have to wait for the paramedics to arrive. Correct, or in a more advanced urban ambulance system, you'll have an EMT and a paramedic partnered together so that the EMT can complement the paramedic by doing the easier tasks and the paramedic can do the more. more I would, I'd love stuff. to believe like a paramedic is like a Michael Scott kind of, you know, they show up and be like, man, this seems more like an EMT job to me. <laughs> really? So asking for a friend, can you write prescriptions? No, no. not at all. No. What are we learning today? Okay, so we're gonna start with bleeding control. There are two main types of bleeding. There's your compressible bleeds and your non-compressible bleeds. So if you were to be stabbed or shot, that's a compressible bleed. That's you're bleeding to the outside of your body that can be stopped. Anything that gets stopped when you squeeze it is a compressible bleed, Basically. right? For example, when I split my knuckle open, shattering the lock, and then oh, yeah. did this. Oh! Yeah, dude, it totally shattered. Oh, oh I think they're in my pants. I cut my knuckle. What's that? I banged my hand down. Oh, hell, it burned through my shirt. So what does it look like when you discover a non-compressible bleed? Well, a non-compressible bleed is something internal. So if you were to be involved in a car accident or another blunt force trauma, and you were bleeding to the inside of your body, a lot of times in the abdomen you can feel a what we call pulsating mass, and that's actually the blood inside your abdomen. So uh, your let's say a rib fractures and pokes something and then stuff is bleeding. So I would imagine the blood would fill a void. Yes. And then and then what you're actually feeling is the pulse just sort of, because it has nowhere to go. So right. it just blah, blah, blah. It's starting to come yeah. out there. Oh, going into the awful. tissue. Yeah. yeah. You can also check your blood pressure. And when your blood pressure starts to drop, but there's no obvious reason, that is a clue that it could be an internal bleed, especially if trauma's involved. So what do you do in that case? Well, that a lot of times we call it light sirens and diesel. Yeah. LSD. Uh, yeah. To the hospital. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And get to a trauma surgeon Diesel because that's sometimes the only way you can, oh you can get that fixed. Is it a case where there's like a general rule of thumb about how much time you have if you know you have an internal bleed? Yes. So, uh, especially the, the system where I work, we have a 15 minute time limit for certain trauma categories. So, certain things, including internal bleeding, if you figure it out, we got 15 minutes to get off the scene and get going. Wow. What if something stupid happens, like you get cut by steel wool or something like that? I'm bleeding. How'd you do that? I don't, I think. <laughs> That's not necessarily a trauma category. So okay. <laughs> if we were to, and I actually did this, where there was a dude who had crashed his scooter and he broke his wrist. That's not a trauma activation. It's something we can splint and we have time to, to get to the hospital. But if someone's involved in a massive car accident and they're unconscious, We've got 15 yeah. minutes to get going. Was it one of those dumb lime scooters? Hey, yes. hey, whoa, whoa, you take that back. Those are the best things that happen in America. <laughs> you still administered aid. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> okay, my job. So, so what are we learning here? <laughs> okay, so this is just a simple wound trainer that we built. It's just a pool noodle with some PVC in it, but it represents an arm or a leg with bone in there. Basically, if you were to get cut in your arm, there's certain types of bleeding that you can see, like uh, capillary bleeding, venous bleeding, and arterial bleeding. So venous bleeding is what? Veins? Oh, vein. and, and that, those mm -hmm. are ones that, that comically go bloop, bloop, bloop. No, no. That, no. that would be an oh. arterial bleed. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So That's... a capillary bleed, when you so often cut your finger, okay. is usually what's going on there. Yeah. Capillary bleeds, those yeah. are minor. Those yeah. are the very yeah. minor, a small cut. It's just oozing out of the wound, bright red or slightly darker blood. That's, that's the one that, yeah. that usually you stick in your mouth first and then you squeeze and then... And, and, Put and, a bandaid okay. on, yeah. A venous bleed is a vein, it's slower, and dark, almost blue, 
dark purple kind of color. And, and this is the oxygenated or non-oxygenated? Yes. Non -oxygenated. The, the that would be non-oxygenated. Oh, that's right, that's right, because it's more red when it's got the that's oxygen in it. That's when it's yes. leaving the body. Got and it. That's Leaving where they back to take heart. blood when you're when you're giving blood. I never realized yeah. that. that they, that's they a vein, not an vein. artery. Yep. That's a vein. Which, and you can tell because it goes out in a smooth, it, it, if darker. it was an artery, it'd go blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. lower it's pressure darker, yeah. there. Arterial bleeds are the worst ones. They're the ones that comically spray. Yep. Like and you saw in Black Hawk Down or whatever, like bright, bright, red. bright red. If you recognize one of those, which is very easy to recognize, the first thing to do is get pressure on it. Yes. Anything you have, whether it be your hand, if you have any kind of gauze at all, or if you need to take off your t-shirt. Plastic bag, t-shirt. Anything. anything at all, get pressure on that wound. A lot of times that's not going to help anything because no. it's under such pressure and you can't just get enough pressure there. Uh, wait, wait, do you do the thing where you raise it above your heart? So is that a thing? It can help, but honestly you're under so much pressure that yeah. it's not going to do anything yeah. except get blood yeah. on you. You want to put the pressure like on the wound directly itself, yeah, so not the in the surrounding area, no. not like, okay, here's where directly I think the blood is coming and from. And if, say it's your arm, if you can get it on a table and then press down as hard as you can, Press as hard as you need to to cause the blood to stop. Yes. <laughs> if blood is still coming, press even harder. Yes. Right. At what point do you do get into tourniquet territory? So a lot of times when that's not working, people have said that it doesn't help to put a tourniquet on because all you're going to do is kill your hand. But I'd rather have an amputation than be dead. And when all your blood is gone, you're dead. Yeah. It, okay, so this ties into all the way back in Cub Scouts. I remember hearing like the moment you put a tourniquet on something, that's gone. Not necessarily. Okay. It's surprising, especially depends on where you are. Uh, because if you're out in the in the boondocks doing something and you get cut like that, you could probably say goodbye to your arm. But it's better that than dead. Right. If you're in a city and you cut yourself on like a rusty pipe or something, then it's as long as you get to the hospital soon, they can generally save it. Wow. It's within four hours, right? Yeah, four hours. But, but, but oh, four hours. Okay. It's a good window. What is the first thing you do when you come across one of these? We got it. Pressure. Got it. <laughs> pressure on. So pressure on. If you can put something on there, like a cloth, a t-shirt, whatever, pressure. Pressure yeah. on. You can constantly like talk about whether or not it's going to get into college. You can yeah. ask how yeah. it's doing on its SATs, yeah. if it's yeah. finished its homework. All the you stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you die on me. If that's not going to work, we're going to have to go to the tourniquet. And this is a, a very simple, it's a triangle bandage we have, but honestly a piece of t-shirt, anything that you can tear into a strip is going to work. And you're going to want to put it on high and tight. Like so a, at least two inches above the wound. But honestly, if you can get it yeah. up as I far up as possible. Oh, like better. not near the wound necessarily. Not even necessarily. So yeah. let, let's say the wound is here. Right. Would you put the tourniquet like up here? I would. Whoa, yeah. really? Yes. Yeah. High and tight is just the general rule. So I'd want to get it as high as possible and as tight as possible. And that's going to give you the best chance of stopping that bleed. Tourniquets, of course, also only apply to the limbs, right? Right. Yes. You're not going to try to like right. it. <laughs> you put, you're like, no. put yeah. it around the neck, high yeah. and tight. Yeah. 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 I just realized I'm still putting pressure on this. <laughs> <laughs> good man. If, if this is a real you know, scenario, you'd be good. But it, it only works on the limbs. And yeah. sometimes the legs, you're gonna need two or three because so, there's yeah, so much mass. Oh, wow. Okay. Whatever the strip is, you wrap it around, right. and, then, and then what, you uh, put a stick in there and twist or something? Yeah, or? I'm gonna use my wife's arm as an example because- Oh, that's safe. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got a bleed down here. The, the pressure isn't working. I'm gonna get it high and tight. I'm gonna kind of tie it off here. So the first part, it's basically like you're tying your shoes. Yes. Kind of, yeah. I'm gonna get it as tight as possible, yeah. and then I'm gonna put a pin in there. What's the pen for? Uh, it's a windlass. Oh, get ready. That's what it's Wait, a windlass? Called. Yeah, it's yeah. called a windlass, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try I've to tie never it. heard so, that. So you would just tie it kind of like you're tying a double knot type deal? And then you get it. With the pen Oh, I didn't. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're trying to get it as tight as possible. Oh, right, yeah. so okay. basically you, you, you get it snug, you yeah. wrap it over uh, yep. on the bottom, you tie, tie it, it, and then you yep. tie it over top, and then you just start twisting, yep. and then the whole thing just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. You're building a, yep. a little uh, a, a motor. It's the yep. same principle uh, when you choke someone with a, a garrote. Yes. Uh, to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, well, yes. And then you get it as tight as possible, and the goal is I shouldn't feel a pulse. <gasps> And that's Wait, the do, point. Do you not feel a pulse? I do not feel a pulse. So, okay, this is a trick. This is a trick that uh, psychics <laughs> would. Get an axe! <laughs> so, psychics would yeah. claim to go into a trance and actually stop their heart. And they would make a big deal about having a nurse there taking their pulse the whole time. They would just have a, a tennis ball in their armpit and they would just squeeze down until, and then you couldn't feel the pulse. Fascinating. Ooh. But I'm going to bet that a tennis ball is not as effective as a tourniquet. Definitely not. <laughs> so, if compression is not working on the outside, you go to a tourniquet. Right? Absolutely. Then what are we learning besides the tourniquet then? Well, there's other places that you can stop bleeding. So if, for example, I were to shoot you with a gun right here. Then that I would consider that rude. That would be very rude. <laughs> yeah, but you could <laughs> move, Daniel. <laughs> you 
And I thought we were friends. Absolutely. <laughs> you can pack that wound and stop the bleeding there. It's very painful for whomever has been shot, but right. it's better than dead, right? Really, the only places you pack on your body are like this area here right. or this area yeah. here. Definitely, right. I mean, when anything like a gunshot in your leg, you can tourniquet that. But if you get up here, you can't really tourniquet that. It's too high, but it still bleeds a lot, right? I mean, if I were on the ambulance, I'd have one of these. But anything, again, works, a t-shirt, something like that. Wait a minute, I've heard that tampons are really good to plug uh, gunshot wounds. Tampons are very Tampon good. Tampons will um, work, yeah. Yeah, if this was a gunshot, I can pack this wound and then you go into where you find the bone and you can actually find the bleed. And the whole point of this is to keep as much pressure on it as possible. And the whole time they're just definitely they're screaming. They're probably screaming. Right. Yeah. And you're just getting as much in there as possible right. until it and won't take it. anymore. It's it's a lot like packing your teeth when you have your wisdom teeth removed. Yeah. Yes. Sure, yeah, yeah. Very much like that. And we've even been taught to get your knee on it. Oh, geez. And just kind of yeah. like sit on them. Oh, and yeah. I would be so help. pissed at you. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, I got shot there, stop. <laughs> yeah. So is the thinking on this that basically you're creating pressure from inside by yes. filling the void and Absolutely. it's pressing yes. down on all the capillaries. Absolutely, and, and even find where the bleeding is coming from, find, find the arterial source and push directly yeah. on that. Wow, yes. so just so a dude's thumb lungs... in your chest as you're walking yeah. into the yeah. trauma Essential. ER. Yeah. You you see yeah, that in that. like uh, you know, dramatizations yeah. and ER and movies and what have you where they'll root around in there to oh, yeah. find the actual vein and mm -hmm. tie it off. Yeah, that was black oh, up yeah. down there. So we've got uh, packing the wounds, we've got putting pressure on it, we've got tourniquets. Is there anything else we need to know? I mean, there's, if you have quick clot gauze, that's an option. We, quick, we've well, got quick clot gauze? Quick is that clot you, gauze, yes. Quick clot gauze. Say that five times That's fast, right, right? I will yeah. not. So <laughs> this is kind of a military thing, but you can buy it civilian use. It's just got some uh, hemostatic agent in there. Like, like an instant the coagulant, gauze. basically? Right. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, the blood comes out as liquid. Normally, it would coagulate and turn to a jelly and then kind of a scab. Right. This yeah. just speeds everything yeah. up. Yeah, most definitely. Okay. You were saying that gauze is actually made in such a way that it, too, on its own, will help with clotting. Definitely, yes. and that's why you don't want to take gauze off if you right. put it on, if it gets soaked through, you just put more on so that it's actually clotting because it's woven properly. It, it, so I assume that's all just a maximal yeah. surface area because the surface area, more exposure to the air. And uh, look at this, I'm so, we're getting very science adjacent. There we're getting go. better by the minute. We're practically doctors. So you come up, the first thing you want to do is find out what kind of bleeding are they have. Is it capillary? Is it arterial or venal? Uh, wait, venal? Isn't that a venous. type of Venus. Venus. Okay. Same Latin root. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, kind of the same, venal versus mortal. I mean, yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> Figure out what the bleeding is, apply pressure until it stops. If it doesn't stop, go to tourniquet. High and tight. High and tight. High and if, tight. It, if it's at a place that you can't tourniquet, then you pressure, you you, you plug. Uh, if you need to, you dig in, you find the vein, you pinch it off, and then you uh, go call trauma ER. Yeah. Call 911. Uh, oh, well, yeah, they, they, yeah. That's, yeah that makes right sense. Oh, call, call them, call them, yes. Oh, although internationally, there's all different. Uh, is it 999? There is. In, I think that's Britain. Yeah. yeah. Know where you are. And then call that number. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah. one. Well, although actually that's pretty good because if you're traveling, then that's something that you might not consider right? in an emergency situation. Do you guys have anything to plug or? No. Well, I mean, we have this. <laughs> if you get hurt in Austin. Yeah. Is there a resource that people should in general go to to get emergency preparedness training? You know, there, there really isn't anything nationally noticed, but you can always go to your local fire EMS station, whatever you have, and, and they'll most likely be glad to help you out. Right on. Oh no, yeah, because yeah. people were doing it sitting, Yeah, and he flipped it over and got the leg. Oh my god, it's just so jet skied oh, down, <laughs> ended up going through the drywall, compound fracture. Yeah, because the other side's a whole lot smoother, so it's yeah. a yeah, faster yeah, ride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it uh, about halfway down, the nose caught. Oh jeez. Yeah.